Check, check. How's everybody doing? Hmm. All right. I just want to make sure that we are live here. Do, do, do. Let's just go check that link I just posted. There we go. All right, let's make sure we got no audio turned on. That should work. Why are you? All right. getting an echo. Is that better? There we go. All right. Okie dokie. Sorry about that. Well, if you're just joining now, that's cool. All right. So. Let's get started. So here we have the big boy. All right, got this guy's. That's a little better. Oh, that's a little too bright. See, that's a little better. It's hard. I want to make sure that you guys can see everything here. Uh, pencil can be very, very faint. So it's hard to find a good balance between being able to see the pencil and being able to to show y'all what's going on. All right. So kind of liking where I'm at right now. So this is the the big boy that we like to call it. It's Union Pacific 4014. Uh, if you were here last week. Uh, you saw that I kind of started my work on this. It's a commission piece. Um, I have a few reference photos kind of laying around. Um, so you can kind of see this guy here. This was actually a painting. Uh, and I marked it all up to kind of show you uh, the rule of thirds and how they composited the shot to make it effective. Actual picture of one coming through uh, last year, I believe. Uh, you know, there's a couple that tour the country. Uh, really good look down here at some of the linkage and the mechanics of what's going on because, you know, want to make sure we do that. Just a good side along reference. You really get to see this whole front truck and how far out it sticks in front of the boilers and everything. Um, I believe this is essentially two 442s four um, married together and it's just a, it's a beast. I mean, like this, this diagram here is saying this is 132 feet long. Goodness gracious, uh, that's a huge, huge size. Um, so it's a 4884 is actually what its uh, wheel arrangement is. So what we're going to do today is this is kind of a in-between stage. Hi, Michael. How are we doing? Um, this is where we have our... Our pencil drawings done we kind of have all the the large parts blocked out uh, so this is usually when I like to start switching over to inking um, I don't usually I, I don't take my pencil sketches so far into detail before I switch to the ink because the ink to me is kind of I, I tend to create just as much in the ink as I do the pencil so that's gonna kind of be the the main impetus here uh, the other thing is, is that, you know, it's just, you're literally drawing everything twice. So from an efficiency standpoint, it can be pretty intense to have to do both ink and then do it all in pencil and then turn around and do it all in ink yet again. So that's not really fun for anybody. 
I mean, unless it is, and that's cool. Uh, I have a couple rules for myself when inking, uh, and I'll just kind of touch on them real quick. Number one is uh, whatever pen you use, you want to make sure that um, I kind of use the same ones throughout. Uh, I have a couple different pens here that I use. The Tombow is it's a wonderful brush pen and great for filling in areas, and I really, really like it. Uh, but its ink is almost a little blue in color. So if you really look at it, you can you can tell. It's not that big of a difference, but as soon as you start putting it next to the Micron Pigma inks, you notice that they are different. And while one is not better than the other, uh, what you do want is consistency. So heck, even if you are using two Sharpies, to ink and that's completely acceptable make sure it doesn't bleed through first uh, then that's what you use okay just stay consistent so I'm using pigmas um, and the microns now I have this is the PN which is a plastic nib which I really like uh, it's just it's really flexible goes multiple directions I don't have to worry about the end fraying um, sometimes you get some of these the finer tip ones I do have uh, and the end can actually spit a little which I don't really like. Uh, we also have the Pigma brush. So this is just a nice big tip that has a really huge, um, long, flat, very flexible tip, which is pretty awesome uh, for filling in huge, large areas, which we will be doing. I mean, it's a black train. <laughs> so it's, it's really tricky to kind of try and draw something that's solid black. Um, and it's actually really gray. So, what we may do, uh, and we'll kind of, this doesn't take form for me until later in the drawing. I usually end up doing all my outline work, just my basic line work, uh, and then I start to worry about shading and things like that. And when it comes to that, then I might break out some markers that uh, kind of help fill that gap uh, and allow me to kind of do a nice, big, long, even strokes. So whether I do that today or I finish up with that uh, TBD, but you know, for the most part, that's kind of my operation style. Now, again, my kind of my pencil drawing is a good guide, um, but it's not the end all be all. The other thing I have is my other rule is like you'll see here, there are ruler marks all over this drawing. Uh, and I have no problem doing that with pencil drawings to have my lines to kind of box out that front end like we did. That's all fine, but when it comes to the ink, I like to freehand everything. Uh, I think it's just very important. It gives it that character, uh, and it really kind of helps make it a little, a little more. I mean, if I wanted a, a really hard straight line, I would probably just use my computer and uh, hold shift key and just draw straight lines all day, which is how I work on that. But when I'm doing this, I want to. I want the hand felt look. So, you know, some of the things that people ask is, oh my goodness, you do all those straight lines by hand? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I'll sometimes do is, you know, I will just grab a, a sketchbook, turn to like say one of the back pages of something that I've already done um, or the back of the book and work your way forward, something, right? Um, and I will just do exercises um, that maybe help me with that day's drawing. So maybe today, you know, is just all about like, let's just, you know, just draw a straight line point to point. All right. This is also, this is when you want to test your pen. Like, hey, how much ink do I have here? I'm a little concerned. Like this is, I'm not getting, there we go. Now it's starting to get to be. But all I'm doing is I'm just kind of touching where I want to go. This is kind of creating a quick little muscle memory for me. So when I draw out. Now you can also kind of just very, you can almost do a very light pen and then come back and do a full stroke. All right. Another thing you can do is just do some cross hatching. Um, this also helps me just again reacquaint myself with my tool if I was doing this every day uh, that would be different but I don't unfortunately get to sit and draw every single day uh, work work needs to get done 
um, and then just kind of just practice that you can also circles are a good thing to practice again I just kind of get my hand going and then just kind of touch the pen down when I'm ready and you know one of the traditional exercises is create a box and then draw circles inside that box of all different sizes just little things like that to just kind of help loosen up your wrist and kind of get you going um, if anybody's ever sat down to to just start drawing um, they'll tell you sometimes you, you got to get warmed up all right it's just like stretching before an exercise you are literally stretching your your little your little phalanges and hey I want to know you know hey is my my pen good and the whole time I'm doing this I'm kind of spinning my pen a little bit just to make sure that you know I'm getting good good coverage on all ends all right, then we'll just test the other one. See how that's doing. So this is kind of, oh yeah, this is on top. All right, so I feel really good. Um, the key to straight lines is, you know, the bigger the thing you're drawing, the more up your arm you are going to draw from. So if I'm drawing a really big circle that's coming from my shoulder, the smaller it gets, you know, it gets all the way down to your wrist and your elbow. Uh, is one thing I've learned, you know, in recent years that I, I didn't used to have as part of my skill set. Uh, so these are the PNs, which I, I love, but they are... I'm gonna have to pick up some new ones here. These are getting getting a little low in ink. You can usually just buy them in a three pack and then they're pretty good. So the, the brush, let me show you that real quick. The brush is pretty cool because I can take a really thin line and, and then just kind of really get nice. It's literally got a brush tip. Um, great for filling in large areas and making that slightly larger line, right? If you have any bold accent lines, the brush, the brush tip is awesome for that. So, some hints. Uh, show you the Tombow brush. And you'll see here that, well, I don't know if you can tell on the, the camera. I mean, it's good and all, but I don't know if it's good enough to show you that it's that big of a difference between the two but if you're if you're eyeballing it you can definitely tell there's there's some difference there so that's why i don't mix them love the tombos one of my favorites uh but you know what the microns you can get them at michael's you can get them you know with your 40 percent off coupons all right things like that so let's get to work. Um, we're going to kind of, whenever I ink, I start the top and work my way down. So I definitely find it's easier to do that. Uh, for my reference photos, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep this drawing nearby that this person did. I mean, again, we're not using this as a color guide because this nose is not accurate for the 414. The 414's nose is actually more of a flat black. I mean, it's literally, this is literally a photo. Um, this one's a little stylized. Uh, so we're going to be using this as our main reference. And then this is just, you know, just kind of helps me figure out what's going on in little detail areas and how this artist took it. Because our view is kind of almost in between these two. So uh, just handy to have reference photos. I could never draw something like this from memory. Not a chance. Um, so I want to start in the back, and I'm just going to kind of work this whole top line, uh, and we're just going to we're just going to take our time. I'm not rushing this at all. All right. And I'm not worried about my shading at all. Hey, John, how's it going? Yes, the big boy is coming along. This thing is a beast. I, I had no idea. 
I saw it came through. I think it came through uh, out west there, right? I'm just gonna so the other thing you want to do is when you whenever we're drawing like this and we're inking is long continuous strokes we don't want little hashy ticks we want good nice long flowing really flowing strokes all right And I'm also not afraid to kind of tweak things as I go a little bit. Maybe I notice something's a little off, something's different, uh, or I just, you know, the final say is the pen, which, which is to say like the pencil's great. That that's the guideline. That's, that's the rough plan. But sometimes the pen comes along and it, it says, no, we want to, want to do something different or maybe I noticed something intersected a little different or something like that. Ah, it's housed in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Nice, nice. All right. really tempting to start thinking about shading and things like that right now and uh to a point i will i will think about like black areas and when i say black i'm talking absolute black areas um if it's an area that absolutely has no light whatsoever um solid black i will ink that but as far as the actual shading, which is going to give things structure and it's going to um, really kind of give some balance to how everything looks, I wait. Because the problem is if I start shading the back and then I come and I start working on the front and then tomorrow come back and revisit it, uh, my shading technique could be slightly different. And if it's slightly different, it's going to look different. And we don't want that. We want a good consistent shade across the whole thing so better to do all of one thing this is definitely the henry ford method of painting is do all of one thing and then kind of move on to the next we don't want to we don't want to kill ourselves trying to do everything and i will come back in with the pencil uh, and i will work on uh so like if i just can't for instance like like the wheels right now, I mean, they're blocked in and we kind of have them lined up and I, I'm happy with where they are. Um, but I don't have any of the detail work done on them yet. And that's fine because when I get down there, I, I will probably spend, I don't even know if I film it, but this whole undercarriage here is probably a whole, a whole two hours just working that because it is detail rich and trying to pick out what you keep in and what you let out is a huge part of your artistic eye and your style like what what's important you know for the commission this is uh this is twofold right this is like i told you last time if you were here uh it's going to be shrunk down and it's going to be used on a very small scale but then it's also going to be you know, hopefully displayed for, for many years in somebody's home. So it has to survive both instances. So it's a little, it's a little tricky of a, uh, of a draw. So we're going to, we're going to err on the side of more detail because it's always easier to clean it up. Right. And also because of that, what I'll do is, you know, cause now you're kind of getting into production art versus, you know, just a say a display piece like I would do for somebody to hang on a wall and that is what do I want the final to look like so what I'll do is before I start working on the shading uh, I will actually stop and scan the picture that way I have a good um, 
a good clean copy that I have in the computer that I can then manipulate. I could colorize it if, you know, things wanted to go that direction. Um, you know, granted this train, there's, there's literally no color, uh, but it also kind of is a safety measure. Like what happens if during shading, I just go completely dark in one area. And then when we shrink it, it just blows it out and it turns it completely black. Like that would be, that'd be like a worst case scenario. So having that, that backup where I could say, okay, let's go in there and let's, let's tone down some of that detail to give me that flexibility. I can do that. All right. So now we're getting into this box here in the front. So there's this large box that's behind the, um, the top of the boiler here that's behind the X4014 sign. So we're going to start front and work back, make your life easy. We're going to start with that, the X4014. We're going to start with that. Um, and I'm probably not going to put the numbers in right now. And I, I might actually wait because to be honest with you, if I'd like that to be visible, um, it would be easier to type it on the computer and then be able to scale it back. Um, but for the final artist drawing, I'll add it back in, but I'm going to save that till after shading is done. Uh, all right. So then this box is back here. Da, 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 da. Oh, I just really like drawing trains. I don't know what it is. I couldn't really tell you. Never really had the, um, it wasn't like one of those lifetime train buffs. I don't know where it came from. Like dad used to take me down to the yard to, to go check them out and watch them go by. Cause we had a, a, a line that ran behind the house that was eh, half a mile away. old Conrail access up into Reading, PA. I believe my brother-in-law, my brother, my brother, brother, I'm sorry, um, actually hopped on the train by accident and wound up going, going an hour north uh, into actual Reading on the train because we used to have to hop over the tracks to get down to the river because like that's what we did when we were kids. We didn't have iPads and stuff. So we used to have to get on your bike, go down to the river. That was always cool. And then you pretend to fish. I don't know about you, but I was no good at it. And uh, putting like worms on hooks and taking fish off kind of freaked me out a little bit. Not going to lie. So. All right. Do, do, do. I usually have some music on while I'm, while I'm drawing, but don't want to get a copyright strike. So YouTube does not take kindly. I tell you what, it is so tempting to shade this bell right now. I'm just telling you. Really want to do it. Not gonna. John got to witness my, my incredibly horrible play of 18xx this past weekend. It's a lot of fun. I ended up, I can't complain, I actually got second place. I don't know how the heck that happened. I blame other people not playing well. It's one of those things you like a thing, doesn't necessarily mean you're any good at it, right? Right, so I like where we're headed. Um, so time to start thinking about some of this stuff back here. So this line.
it's funny. There's a um, near where I live. We have what's called uh, um, Pennsylvania Live Steamers. Is actually right near my house, and what they do is they actually build model trains, um, and and they're 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 big enough that a, a man can ride on one. Um, I mean the the engines are they're, they're big. I don't know what the scale is, to be honest, but it it was uh, it's pretty impressive. I, I got to go there once with my Corvette Club back in the day. And uh, I didn't quite have the appreciation I have for it now because, let me tell you, now it's like, you know, you, you really kind of see what, what this is all about and understand a little more of the history. Uh, there, there's some YouTube stuff out there of a guy who works on his train. And the, you can spend the cost of a small car on these things. Uh, he's probably got one of the best looking trains out there. Uh, there's two really good ones that I recall. One was a New York Central, and one was a Pensy. And his was the Pensy, and it it was it's impressive. Got like little steam boilers in them. They stoke them. They use charcoal. So if tracks happens, tracks east happens this year. Uh, that's the goal. I still think it may happen. We're gonna. I'm going to do everything I can. We'll see what our world is like if we get this rebound they're talking about and whatnot. Um, but if we do it, uh, one of the days, I do know a member there. He runs a little a little, uh, little John Bull. Uh, he offered to, uh, to try and see if he could get us in for a day and do a morning tour there. I thought that would be pretty awesome. Uh, you know, kind of be able to combine the hobby a little bit. You know, think outside, just putting trains on a board, give it some physicality. It's got little, little lights. All right. See, like this might be a part where, you know, hey, we can darken the window now. So we'll just do that. Like there's something really satisfying about putting in some of the dark areas and stuff. Sorry, I should have put the camera over my other shoulder, huh? All right, so... We do have these styles, so what I'll do is I'll come in and give them some dimension before I start blacking it out in here. Now, if I tried to take the uh, the brush tip in there, it would be too big. Uh, and the end is not so precise. And that's probably because I've been using it for so long. Also, do I want to go completely black? If I if I don't, I can just kind of leave it a little light crosshatchy there to kind of show some, some depth. But that's always fun. I always enjoy being able to, uh, to kind of take a moment and do that. All right. Now... You can get completely lost here in all of the machinery and the piping and everything that's going to go on. There's tons of pipe down here that's kind of running through the back of the steamer and out. So we're going to, we're just going to kind of like not go crazy uh, thinking about it quite yet. But there is a pipe that kind of comes down the side here and travels through. Uh, you can kind of see it here. This this pipe comes along and kind of comes down and out. So that I think is an important piece. This piece here, this this guy, is super important, uh, and I think that that's a uh, a signature that has to be on every single one of these um, drawings because I think it's it's a very very crucial piece. So we'll definitely include those. 
Um, but this one, and again, this is where, hey, let's get the pencil out and let's just kind of, you know, I didn't draw it in when we first did this, but it kind of, it rolls up the side. Kind of comes down through here and then back. All right, so I don't want to over detail it, but that, that I think is, it's a subtle detail that should stay. And it helps really kind of connect and ground. When things run through things, I think they, they kind of help tie it together. You know, just like that. So, not much. Now, let's take a, a moment and we can kind of clean off like this area here, right? We've already done it. Now we want to be careful right where I just drew that, that ink might be wet. So we're going to kind of wait. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to smear it. That would be the worst. And I've done it. You can hide it, but. One way to help with that is whenever you're, whenever you're erasing, go in the direction of the lines. That helps. That way, if you pull, you're just kind of pulling along that line, and it's just just gets a little fuzzier. You know, I talked about making the digital version of this. The other nice thing about the digital version is if you have any like little little bleed overs or anything like that, or a little smear, we can just kind of go in and touch that up for the final art. Um, but let's come across the top here. Let's start cleaning this up just a little bit. I like this stage. This is a lot of fun because it kind of really lets, I usually, I kind of save this usually. I usually save this for the very end um, just because it's, it's so, so cool to see like the whole drawing just kind of get revealed. But, you know, since, we're working with a little bit of a clock today, kind of give you some of that. So you can kind of see how now all we're left with is that. So um, important thing, like when I draw, uh, I use a nice soft lead. That way it comes up a lot easier. Hard leads like an H or even anything above a 2B, um, even 2B can be a little, a little hard. I like like a, usually like an HB is about as hard as I get. Uh, but what will happen is it actually will crease the paper and then that's going to kind of get screwed up when you go to do your shading and all those things. So, you know, just use a very, very, very soft uh, pencil, but don't go so soft that you're pushing charcoal, like anything that would be softer than like a 4B. Uh, now you're getting into charcoal and there's a lot of graphite going down on that paper and it'll be really hard to get it off. Not to mention, you're probably going to be dragging it everywhere, which is just not cool. All right, so let's talk about this pipe. Ooh, you notice I've been kind of stalling, huh? Um, so this straight line, easiest to just do it in one full shot. Uh, you can see here it runs back from the cabin all the way out. So this is one of the... Uh, the pressure gauges, I do believe one of the main ones were release valves, I forget exactly. Uh, I did look it up once because I got curious, but it's on. It's a signature item. I see it on every steam train uh, and it always runs directly into the uh, into the cab. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna draw it straight. I mean, here it's, you can kind of see it's got a little, little motion to it. So if, if our pen gets a little soft, that's fine. Um, I've already kind of sketched the straight line in. So we're gonna run out and then it's gonna kind of die right here behind this light. And then there's gonna be fittings, you know, about every 18 inches. So we'll see how it looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this line. All right, this is me working up the nerve. All right, and it's a kind of a very soft line uh, because now we're gonna start building around it. So up here, you can kind of see we have these, uh, it's got these couplings every so often that hold it out. So we have a little play. Now, how do we want them to look? I grab our pencil and just say, hey, 
We got one here, it goes in, stands it off, little standoffs. So it kind of looks like a T that's kind of pointed in. All right, so we're gonna, all right, how big is that gonna be and then how often? So there's uh, two here before we get to that. And then, then we're pretty steady. So we'll run that as our distance, blink. Boink. And it, as it gets further, it's going to get closer. And it's not that it's physically getting closer, but visually it will, it will get a little tighter. All right, so that's kind of a good, good start point. Now I can kind of play on either side of these as I'm doing this. And I'm just going to... Just loosely draw each one. It's going to be a little T connector coming off the bottom. I like to do every two because I think it's easier then to adjust the middle one to kind of be where we want it to be if we, we get off. Because we're not sitting here with, you know, a measurement. You have, you have some guide posts, but for the most part, we don't know exactly. Or, you know, you want it optically spaced, not measured. Alright. And then now we need to now we need to add some thickness to that. So we're gonna pick pick our side. So when we drew that we kinda said it was gonna be the bottom. So now we just come back in and draw the connectors. So instead of having to draw two really long, perfectly straight, thick lines, now you have to draw 20 little segments. <laughs> Eat the elephant, one bite at a time. And remember, this is going to get a little smaller as it gets farther. All right, so that's kind of got that going on. Let's see what else. I mean, there's another one. There's another cool little pipe that kind of runs in here. So I think we're gonna we're gonna add that, and that kind of comes down from here. This line needs to be mirrored down here because the pipe is going to be against that, right? Then it kind of comes right up to here. All right, uh, there's a there's a foothold up here. Looks like a foothold. I mean, I could be wrong. All right, it's gonna it's gonna be again. We have to think of this barrel that's going on here. This goes behind. that pipe then it's going to come out. This one's really close. And there's only like one little gusset that kind of crops out right here and grabs a hold of it. Oof. You think I didn't have any caffeine today? You would be very very wrong. Right, so that's that. We got our pipe. So there's a couple miscellaneous doors and some some shapes. I again, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of leave that because I'm I'm digging the detail level we're at. We're kind of picking like what would you see at, you know, twenty feet, thirty feet. You got to kind of picture that in your head. All right. So we're gonna start inking out this. All right, now there's actually two circles here. We've started the one, right? But there's actually a center one. 
as well. So we're going to have to deal with that. Uh, let's see, we talked last time about this hinge. This hinge was pretty, pretty unique. Never really seen that on the fronts. So usually you just see You just see like the, the whole front is just bolted on. So let's think about this a second. So let's uh, alright digging that. Got a little play up here. The other thing is, once you get comfortable with your pen, you can actually, you can kind of do a light line before you commit to a, a harsh line if you need to. Um, what's kind of interesting along this side is this is actually all very much in shade. So it actually gives us a, a little room to kind of just soften this up and maybe tweak this, this round a little bit. And again, we'll probably finish that up a little tighter when it comes around. Now this has these little, kind of the these catch rivets on all the way around. And they're just like these little fingers. So we're just going to go around and we're going to add those in. And they may get... We'll see how they, they live in the final. Let's see. Remember, it's going to get a little bigger in here. A little closer. All right. It's a little nerve wracking doing this live, you know. You guys get to see all my mistakes when I, uh, you know, it's one of those things, you know, you, you see somebody's final product, you don't get to see the, the mound of mistakes that were behind it, right? But they're all out here, I don't, I just put this up. I'd like to uh, turn on the camera while I'm working, right? Might as well. If it gives somebody something to do, something to think about, encourages them to go do something fun, can't be bad, right? Hopefully it encourages people to go draw your happy little trees, do all that fun stuff, right? All right, so we got a light here. All right, notice I didn't finish the bottom of the tank yet, and that's because I don't know exactly how it's going to hit. So. So it's kind of like just leaving it done, and then we'll kind of come back in as we're, we're finishing up here. All right, we got this UP shield. This is going to be key. This is key. So this is dead center of the train. If I know I need to get one thing right today, 
believe it would be this because I literally saw it behind behind John's head when we were playing the other day. So I know it's got to be right. So let's clean this out so I can get a good. All right, and also remember this side is sloping away. So this point has to be higher, not by much. That's being a little extreme. But like, that's kind of our lines. All right, gets a little fat belly. Comes down to that point. Can you tell I'm concentrating? I got quiet. Sorry. All right. Now, it's really tempting to run in there with the eraser, but don't do it because you will. You will most certainly, certainly screw things up. All right. You got these vents over here. Now I'll be honest with you, the shield probably is a little smaller than the actual train, but I wanted to accentuate it and I want to make sure it's seen when we do the uh the bigger drawings. So I did I did take a little artistic license and scale it up a little bit. All right. The hardest thing about doing like these lines and these little these little vents and stuff is that there's you have to remember that it's actually running on that plane. So it's actually headed to a point, a vanishing point. Now it's very shallow, but it but it's out there. The other nice thing about, you know, pen is you can control, it's not on or off, right? Like you can, I can control it and feather it and we can kind of get some different weight lines. That's one of the way we kind of, kind of show depth and accentuate things is by how, how hard that line is and how thick it is. You know, things that are close tend to be very, very bold and easily spotted. All right. Now, all that was because we were doing these, these little peanuts all the way around. And we got to that point. All right. So we got our light. And there's some detail stuff back here. But we're going to allude to it more than we're going to actually draw each and every one okay you can get totally sucked into every little minute detail and it's uh you can get really lost and i think that there's something to be said for you know just minimizing that a little bit all right like there's 
all these railings up front here are intense, right? Well, we're going to wait. We're going to do them almost towards the end because what I want to do is I want to make sure everything else is mapped out and ready to receive it. That way, when I go to put them in, they make sense, right? If I try just dropping them in now, it, they may or may not like kind of line up with what's there. But if I kind of watch the platforms here, like we got this low platform that's down here. We got this higher one that's kind of up here. All right, and then this one kind of mirrors that one out there. It's very easy to get lost in all these little things. Also, if you if you have all these little detail pieces, right? And let's say I want to come back in and hit them with a marker, like my my large brush pen or something. Then I can come back in and just knock them all out at the same time, same strokes. It'll help kind of keep everything solid, right? So it helps helps hold it together. All right, so let's look at this cow catcher. Interesting thing I was um, I was noticing. I haven't. I don't think I've drawn too many of the uh, the English trains, uh, but it's pointed out to me like how different they are in in style. And one of the big things. Is, is certainly the uh, the lack of the big monster cow catchers that we're used to seeing on, you know, the old John Bulls, the big, uh, the early, like, pioneer locomotives. You know, you may see some of that, some of this stuff on um, the northern ones, like the Scandinavian trains, but they're more designed for pushing snow and things like that out of the way. So remember when I said I don't usually do the darks. I probably will do the dark on these because immensely satisfying to just fill in large dark areas. It really is. And you can kind of tell too if you if you're looking I'm not really using our, like my, my initial lines, they're a good guide, but they're, uh, that's all they are. I'm not, I'm not like tracing over them. All right. So then we're going to, we're going to come over here and try and match these up. I'm going to have a little bit of perspective to play with here. But it's not a ton. There's this affectation right here in the front that's that's just kind of it's got this 
got like a, a hitchy bull nose thing going on but it's not necessarily hitch right because they didn't they didn't stack these cars like they did other ones definitely the diesels later on in life we're gonna end up showing that a lot more with the uh, with the shading and the marker all right so let's go in let's fill these in I was definitely one of those kids who would outline with their crayon and then lightly color over cell shading before it was cool huh I kind of wish my school had a commercial art program. My life might be a little different right now. It did not have was a fine art program, which it's nice and all, but you know, how much potted plants do people need? How much fine art do you actually buy? It's one of those things you don't buy a lot of, right? All right, where are we at? We're almost in an hour. All right. It's about it's about how long I spend at a shot. I spend about an hour, maybe an hour and a half on a drawing at each point, uh, just because sometimes you kind of get locked in and. You know, you get in that, I can't see the forest through the trees, and, you know, stepping away from a thing and then coming back to it can really, really help. Yeah, like I say, all the trucks and everything on there, that's a, it's, it's a big job waiting to happen, isn't it? Notice I'm kind of saving that for last. I don't know if I'll get to it today. It's one of those things that when I start it, I want to make sure I get all of it done in one shot. Because I want I want to make sure that all the wheels feel the same. If you stop on one and then come back to it, you can very easily lose your way. Your train of thought, what you were thinking, what your plan was. And then next thing you know, you got two different looking wheels right next to each other and that that ain't cool. There's a cool pipe that runs like right down here, right through there. I might have to come back and visit that. All right, so what are you doing? Oh, you're dropping down and in. So you're dropping into a T. So where it helps because I just can't see exactly what's going on there but with this side view drawing that I have I can kind of make it out a lot better. I'm one of those artists who needs to 
need to ground myself with something. Whether that's uh, you know reference material, reference palette, whatever it is, like I need to have that that kind of good grounding to be able to go and and pick how I'm going to operate through something. All right, so I got those bolts. I think rivets are important, right? really kind of show the era of a thing. All right, looks like we have two lines of offsets. I think we got a little rivet popping over the top there. Cool, cool. There's a, uh, it's actually like a large half circle that's like right up here that's riveted on that I think we're gonna kinda, we're gonna show lightly. And these are looks like hex bolts, so I'm gonna literally draw multi sides, not draw little circles. All right, let's do that foothold. At least I'm thinking it's a foothold. All right, give it some indication lines of where it's going. Some pipes up here. We're just going to put some put some lines in to just kind of show what's going on here. All right, there's a little door over here. Another one back here, but it's different. Again, we're just being pretty light with it. All right, we got, let's see, we got some pipes. So this area goes into blackness, but it kind of fades out. So I am going to. It's not shading per se, but it's going to be giving some depth so I can kind of plan out what what would you actually see back here as it's kind of fading into this this covering that's kind of sitting here. All right, this actually is kind of goes in like this is not a hard edge so we'll have to soften that too all right like where we're headed with this this is looking uh starting to make me feel better all right uh so this is kind of cool like this this car it's got a coal car has got some it's got these straights You know, like these straight sections that kind of jut out. But then in between them, it still tapers in. So that's kind of cool. It's a cool looking feature. I dig that. Sometimes these the, the tenders can be very, very boring because they're just all one shape 
you know, you're you're problem solving when you're doing a drawing just as much as you are if you're doing like playing a game or anything like that. Constantly deciding, well, what, what should I keep? What's important? What should go? You know, what what can we, what do we not need? What what do we keep? What I just you know, I love all these decisions. They're they're hard, man. They're hard. A lot of rivets on the tender, that's for sure. Okay. All right. Do another little review. Hi, Emma. How we doing? We're just, we's just drawn trains. Get rid of some of our sketch lines here. Given our, our reveal. I like this uh, tacky eraser. This is perfect for this. It's gentle. It doesn't leave a ton of crumbs. with this this guy's doing he's coming along nicely if I do say so so in here I mean this this is a whole cylinder right so if I just go black in there that's not gonna be cool oh <laughs> it's it's one of my favorite parts of my getting rid of those sketch lines that's why I've been doing it for y'all. I usually wait until the very end and then just do everything and just have crumbs for days. But, uh, oh, it's so good, so good. All right, what do we got left? What do we got left? So this actually has a couple bolts that hold this thing on. I think that's going to have the 414 in it. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at these guys. All right, so this actually this big old. Big old piston head out here. It goes in front of the wheels. Uh. It's got these rivets in it. Things a beast. I mean, there's a few, there's a few rings in there, but I don't want to go too crazy. I can kind of solve that more with when I come back on the shading pass than I can anything else, right? So if I take, if I take too long, all right. There, there's lots of little parts and things that are going into the top here. So we'll just kind of have them 
kind of come off. All right. Then we're going to do the same thing with this brother back here. If you got multiple objects that are exactly the same, it's Again, trying to keep things consistent. Just do everything all at one time. That way, even if you even if you screw something up, if you have two of it out there, it won't look like a screw up. <laughs> It'll look like an artistic decision. Right? And that just kind of disappears. Yeah, so this is probably all going to have to get shaded very, 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 very dark, right? Because this part of the machine, it's going to be the deepest, the darkest, the blackest. You won't be able to see it, right? All right, so when it comes to the wheels, uh, all right, let's finish up. We got a couple more bips and bobs I want to add in along the top here. Um, like there's definitely some pipes. It's like a nice one that runs up here. And I'm not going to go crazy with all of them. I just want to pick a couple you know, kind of cool signature ones that just kind of stand out and say, say what they are. Like there's one that runs down here. That I think is pretty cool. Just kind of sits there. Um, I mean, they all have their purpose, right? But I don't know what they are, but doesn't mean that they, they don't belong there, right? Alright, so there's definitely another one that runs. Alright. There is a... There's a big kind of dome cylinder that hangs down here. So we'll kind of pop that in. Um, the important thing is, is like as I'm starting to add these details, is if it give it an end, like if it's a pipe, don't just kind of run it into. Yeah, I know my hand's right there, isn't it? I think maybe next time I'll switch the camera to the other side. Um, we talked about this guy and this guy's kind of cool, right? He's kind of, he comes down and then just kind of sneaks behind here. He's pretty neat. This is kind of a step. Uh, it's kind of another pipe back there. I don't want to go too crazy thinking what they are. There's there's this the connector pipe that runs down the front. I'm going to leave that off. I'd rather the cow catcher be kind of out there. Uh, let's see, we got that guy. There's a couple of little pipes over here. There's 
actually got a valve on it. And again, it's kind of like drawing a tree. We don't have to we don't have to show every single leaf. We have to say say that there are leaves there, right? So oh, I think the next big thing is going to be starting to get these wheels done. So I need to get those wrapped up. Uh, and then we'll kind of get our track in and then it's going to be shading and then when I shade I like to definitely work from the belly of the beast so we have um, all this really really black dark gray here that we're gonna have to tone up and that's gonna really set the tone for how dark our drawing is going to be because pick the blackest area if it's black 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 well then you're that's going to be the darkest area but unfortunately everything on this this train is black so we're going to work with a little bit of license and gray right so this is going to be there will be some black down here but then it'll get gray as the tube kind of makes its way out and around the machine right and also then we can start to worry about shading the individual elements which will that's how we depict shape is through shade so I have two ways I can do directional lines if I were to do a bunch of a bunch of lines like this well then you know it's it's a circle right but if I shade it dark to light then you also can kind of get that impression which is probably going to be the way we're gonna go um, but I'm gonna definitely get the uh, the wheels done get those trucks on there um, and we'll do just very, very, very basic line shading, like, kind of like we did here. That's it. Uh, then we'll take a picture, scan it, have it in the computer to be able to manipulate later and just kind of play with. And if anything needs fixing, that's where I'll do it. So um, I think this is a good stopping point because these, the wheels are probably another hour of work uh, to sit in there and to do them. So I don't want to get started on them but that's the next logical step uh, once you get the wheels done then it's on to picking out the finer details i want and the shading and kind of start going from there so i am going to uh i'm gonna call it we're gonna say this is done this was fun uh i hope you enjoyed it uh hope hopefully you got to hang out and maybe learn something with me uh, I guess still got to go do a bunch of work. So I got stuff to do, stuff to plan. So that's going to be my afternoon. Uh, record something tonight for my train folks. And then uh, call today. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching. Tune in next time. I think uh, Thursday I have, uh, we're going to make some acorn, I think actually butternut squash ravioli. We're going to make some fresh pasta. We're going to do that from hand. Uh, Sunday I think we're gonna turn around and uh, I think we're gonna do some uh, we're gonna do some digital artwork for our next uh, our next fiasco um, we have fiasco tomorrow night which I'm excited for uh, and then the next one after that will be the incorrigible party doing a fiasco with them so cool so thanks so much enjoy your day thanks Emma thanks John for hanging out everybody else who's in chat good to see you uh, be well, stay safe, and uh, try and get some creativity flowing. Uh, I know it works for me, so have a good one.